We've got about 18 head of cattle. That's including some heifers that, that are about a year old that we're keeping to replace because we're, we're going to sell some some older cows that, you know, this, their productive time's about past. And, uh, but in this pasture, along with the cows, they got the rams. The rams are the daddy sheep to the, to the ewes. And uh, I don't keep the rams with the, the ewes except like in September and October. That's about the breeding time. And that, that five months later, after a sheep is bred, she'll have babies. So that puts them in like February and maybe a few days into March having lambs. And again, this is a mixture of the cotton seed and some uh, soybean corn pellets. And the cows really like it and the sheep do too. But uh, these, these cows, not the bull, but the cows are either longhorn or part longhorn. Uh, we bought, my son and I bought three longhorn cows and we, we borrowed a, uh, a black bull, Angus bull. And so we've kept all, most of the, all the heifers. And uh, so all these mama cows now, except for those three older ones, have been raised here on this farm. And, uh, you know, she's, she's a good example of, of what uh, a crossbred Angus bull with a longhorn cow will come out. Sometimes they come out black and white. And you'll see some in a minute at another spot. But they, they have real good uh, grazing habits uh, good, uh, they're good natured. Now you can make them mean, you know, by mistreating them, but uh, they, they're pretty gentle and, uh, uh, you know, will let me, you know, do stuff around them. Now when you get them caught up in a, in a barn, they don't really like that, and I try not to, to do that. But uh, anyway, this, this works out real good for me. I'm, I got these cows with the bulls because they were the last ones to, uh, to calve. And those heifers and those other cows are back over here. I don't want those cows bred until May, so I got to keep the, the bull away from them. Uh, and those heifers, we're going to get another bull for them, and then we'll sell him. Yeah, this, this longhorn, the cows, they keep their horns all the time, whereas like a deer, they shed their horns. Sheep, if they had horns, they would have their horns all the time. They, they wouldn't shed them even though they're ruminant animals, or they, they shoot their could, like deer and, and the cows and the sheep all, and goats are all together. Even goats keep their horns, they don't shed them. Uh, deer's kind of unique in that, that they shed their horns and have to regrow them every year. But uh, this cow, <coughs> she's not mean uh, to the other cows, but she will use them use her horns sometimes to move a, a cow out of the way. I mean, they, they respect her. They gotta give her a little bit of room, but she she doesn't, uh, she's not aggressive with her horns. And so she, she fits our program pretty well. And uh, we've kept a lot of heifers off of her. She raises really good calves and her heifers turn out really well. And we'll see some of those in a minute that are now cows and had their third or fourth calves. So uh, uh, when, I, when I bought, the Longhorns. I chose not to buy her, but my son bought her. Uh, and but she's she's been the best of the three Longhorns, and uh, I think she's an outstanding cow, and uh, just just gives a lot of milk, and just does a really good job of raising uh, cows. Like those sheep, the, the ewes, they teach their calves what to, to graze. And if there's a, a plant out here that may be dangerous to them, or it doesn't taste good. If she doesn't graze it, those those calves learn not to graze it. So there's a lot of education going on between the mama and the calf, or the mama, you and the, the lamb. Okay, where we're standing is uh, with CRP pine trees. And in 2016, I had some, some trees uh, close to here thin, but also had these clear cut. That means they cut down everything. And so I've converted that from pine trees to grassland, but uh, we didn't remove the stumps. We just allowed uh, uh, time to take care of the stumps, uh, uh, termites and all that kind of got in there and ate them up. And this past fall, I overseeded this with ryegrass and fertilized it, and it's made a pretty good winter grazing area for the, the sheep and the cows. And uh, 
I'm fixing to put the feed in the trough for the cows and it's basically the same feed that we've been feeding everything else, just the minerals are about a little bit different. It's the cotton seed and pellet mix. Come on, whoop! Come on, whoo! There's, there's four heifers right here, and what a heifer is, is a, it's not a fully adult cow yet, and she, these heifers have never been bred, they've never had calves. So we're planning on breeding them in April, next month, and uh, they're, they're just a little bit over a year old, so that'll put them having a calf when they're about 22, 23 months old, when they're about two years old. And that's how we get started to, uh, in, in having uh, additional cows, is by raising our own calves. We know what they are, where they came from, and uh, you know, just kind of can raise them and, and help uh, you know, know what their disposition is, if they're going to be mean or, or whatever. Normally cows aren't mean, they, they're kind of abused when they're mean. But all these calves here were, were born here on this farm. And you can see the smaller calves are there this, this year's crop. But that Longhorn Angus Cross, they, they re, it really produces some good cows. Now, on the fit, finishing, <coughs> feeding them out, <coughs> and when they slaughter those ca uh, calves and, and you eat a steak or a hamburger, I don't know if, if anybody can tell the difference, if there's any Longhorn influence in those cows, but uh, it makes a good body structure cow, and they usually have real good milking ability, and. Uh, and they graze good, and uh, they, they're just good mama cows. This is an Anatolian Shepherd dog. Uh, she, he's uh, he was born like in November, so he's about five months old. And his job on the farm here is to protect these sheep from uh, coyotes and and other strange dogs <clears throat> that could could do harm to them. And uh, so he he stays with the sheep. He stays a lot at the barn, but he's he's still kind of got an ear and a and a nose that that helps him pick up smells of a coyote or something like that or a strange dog. And uh, they, uh, I've got another dog too, and they, between those two, I hear them barking at night some, and uh, you know, so they're that's their way of uh, defending the sheep. Uh, but I have found a dead coyote in the pasture, and I I'm pretty certain that the uh, it was this that dog got killed, but it was. Uh, one of the Anatolian shepherds killed that coyote. And I've had great Pyrenees, and, and they're good dogs too to, to have as a guard dog for your sheep or goats, and even for cows, but cows are pretty much more able to take care of themselves, but a, a sheep, they're more vulnerable. And uh, one year I lost a good many sheep to coyotes, and so uh, that I didn't have a dog at that time, but since then I've had dogs, you know. And uh, they, uh, they like to protect them, and uh, some of them uh, would even growl at a stranger. Now, this dog hadn't done that yet. He may as he gets older, but uh, they, they know me. Uh, but a stranger person coming up, they might growl at him. Now, I don't think they'd bite him or anything, but they, they, they really uh, are leery of anything strange or new or happening around on the farm. <laughs>